I was wondering when you'd arrive. Welcome aboard the Titanic. I am Smedles, your steward. I have a letter for you from Bruce Ismay, your host. The line has instructed me to relay the following information. Like her twin sister, the Olympic, the Titanic was built at the shipyards of Harland and Wolf in Belfast, Ireland. Construction began in March 1909. At over 46,000 tons, the Titanic is the largest ship in the world. A triple screw steamer, she has three propellers. This, one of the wing propellers, is 23 feet in diameter. The ship is powered by 29 coal-fired boilers and runs at a top speed of 23 knots. The ship is 882 feet, 9 inches long and 92 and a half feet wide. Stood on end, she would dwarf the great buildings of the world, including the plant's tallest, the 750 foot high Woolworth Building in New York. The Titanic's outfitting was completed in March of this year. After only one day of sea trials, she proceeded directly to Southampton for provisioning and the boarding of her 2,200 passengers and crew. The ship is under the command of Captain E.J. Smith, who has over 40 years of experience on the sea. Most recently, he commanded the Olympic on her maiden voyage. We will arrive in New York no later than Thursday, April 18th, and possibly even earlier. The Titanic is your home until then. Please do not fail to avail yourself of the many luxuries and amusements she has to offer. You are now free to explore the ship at your convenience. Do you desire additional instructions? Very good. We of the White Star Line hope that your stay on board Titanic is as relaxing as possible. As you explore the ship, please bear in mind the following advice. The mouse is your hands. The keys, your feet. If you find the screen too dark or too bright, follow the directions on the control screen help panel or consult your manual on adjusting your monitor. To find the control panel help and other features, click on the life preserver at the bottom of the screen. The control panel has a help button as well as a quit feature. Remember, you cannot save your tour. You may also adjust the volume. Test the settings by clicking on the black knob. You may also switch the theme music on or off. After making any adjustments, click OK to return to your current seat. Wandering the ship, if you notice a hand, it indicates something to click on. May I suggest you do so? You shall want to converse with other passengers. If you fail to understand them, click on their face. They will repeat their last sentence. At any time, you may click on the ship symbol below to view the passengers and crew who volunteered to serve as your personal tour guide. Click on their picture. You will go to their onboard location automatically where they will relay news and information. I trust you'll find it fascinating. If you have an internet browser, new guides will be available periodically on Cyberflix's homepage on the World Wide Web. Our address, www.cyberflix.com. Remember, you must first quit the CD-ROM to download new guide. I am most certain you will find the internet to be the very latest in modern technology, just like the Titanic. Now, if you will excuse me, good night.
My name is Eric Burns. I'm a photographer. Did you get a cigar? Smethels tells me we have 8,000 of them on board. These are some of my photos. This lady's Molly Brown of Denver. She was a waitress who married a gold miner who struck it rich. Once a nobody, she now knows everybody. This is Bruce Ismay, the president of the White Star Line. He's the second Ismay to join the family firm. He just came along for the ride on this trip. Left his wife back home in England. <laughs> Some days I wish I had left my wife back home in the States. That's Thomas Andrews, the Titanic's designer. He's along so he can find flaws with the ship's operation and correct them before the return voyage. You'll probably see him everywhere you go. Goodbye. Passengers aren't supposed to be in the boiler room, so watch those furnaces. The captain's ordered full speed ahead, and the boilers are steaming. We've got 29 of these monsters to feed. Each one's got three furnaces, and we've got 6,000 tons of coal to shovel between here and New York. The steam's funneled to the engines that turn the propellers, so the stoker's job's important. But hard, shoveling coal, over and over, all the way to America and back. They say the Titanic's the single largest thing to float. I can believe it. All very modern, except for this shoveling, which I've got to get back to. See you later, mate. Welcome to the bridge. From this room, I have absolute control over this ship. These are the controls for the watertight doors. 
They connect the boiler and engine rooms below, should any water enter. I can lower them instantly. They're controlled by an electric magnet. We can stay afloat indefinitely with this system. Not that we'll ever need to. We're making quite good time. Our location, uh, let's see. Let's see, not far from Newfoundland. The wireless operators are in touch with Cape Race, I believe. The wireless room is just astern of the bridge, should you wish to visit. planning to send a wireless. We have so many passenger messages, the operators hardly have time for a break. Strictly speaking, the wireless operators are employees of the Marconi Wireless Company. Mr. Marconi invented our system, you know. It's the most modern communications device on the high seas. The system operates with this key and a code of dots and dashes, or short and long signals. We're in constant contact with the ships around us in the nearest land stations. In fact, a message is coming in right now. Please come back later. Perhaps we can send your message. the gymnasium. Nothing like staying fit while at sea is. That's Mr. Lawrence Beasley and his friends on the mechanical camel and the horses. They're almost like the real thing. And try the rowing machines. With the sea air flowing through the windows, they're very invigorating. When you've done exercising, visit the Cafe Parisian for a bit of relaxation. It's quite pleasant. The boat deck's right outside. That's where they store the lifeboats. Just in case. <laughs> Look at the time. I'll see you around. Goodbye. Case, lovely, yes. and of course you'll see absolutely everyone passing through here on their way to dinner. The Astors themselves just went down. Colonel John Jacob Astor is one of the world's wealthiest men, you know. I hear he's worth more than 107 million dollars. They have one of the most expensive suites on board. Their tickets alone cost more than 4,000 dollars. Mrs. Astor, she was Miss Madeline Force of New York, is the Colonel's second wife. They've been married only since September and they've been touring the continent since. I hear they're already expecting a child. I do hope the voyage isn't too difficult for poor Madeleine. She's only 19, can you imagine? Then there's Izzy, Isidore Strauss. He's a partner in Macy's and Lord and & Taylor in New York. Such lovely emporiums, don't you agree? He was born in Bavaria, but I hear he grew up in Georgia. I hear he even tried to join the Confederate Army. They wouldn't have him. Mrs. Strauss is along as well. Oh, that's Archie Butt. Major Archibald Willingham Butt, I should say. He's returning from a very important mission to the Pope in Rome, and he's carrying a message back to President Taft. But when he's off duty, Archie is such a gay blade. Have him tell you about being sent to the Pacific with a boatload of mules. He's just too amusing. 
The page is playing the roast beef of old England. That's the call to dinner. Perhaps we'll see you again later. Leyland Trask is the name? Luxurious, is it not? And excellent for meditation. Do you know anything about time travel? It's curious. I was just reading this book. It was written in 1892, only 14 years ago. But it's weirdly modern. It's about a ship called the Titan, the largest ever built. It was supposed to be unsinkable, but in the book, the ship sinks with everyone on board. Gives me the shivers. But the shivers aren't that uncommon in my line of work, visions, predicting the future, that sort of thing. For the past couple of days, though, it's been very odd. I keep seeing newsboys and the word Carpathia. I can't figure it out at all. Good evening.
This is the third class area. Are you lost? I can tell you're from first class. Really, you shouldn't be down here. This section is only for immigrants. I'm traveling with my brother, Jack. We're on our way to America and a new life. Jack says we shall have a huge farm in America and a big house as well. It was hard to leave though. Most of my family stayed in Ireland. We may never see them again. On the other hand, perhaps we'll get rich. Maybe someday I'll come home for a visit and travel first class on this very ship. These people are the Benellis. They're in the cabin next to mine. They're Italian and don't speak one word of English. I don't know how they'll survive in America. Perhaps they have relatives in New York. I certainly hope so. It's true. They do have automobiles on board. They're stowed forward of here. Just keep exploring. You're sure to find the cargo hold sooner or later. I suppose you know what happened. It was horrible. I barely made it into the lifeboat and onto the Carpathia. There weren't nearly enough of them. Lifeboats, that. We really didn't know what happened until we arrived in New York. This is what one of the newspapers reported. At 11.40 p.m. on April 14th, the Titanic hit a huge iceberg. The impact ripped the hull apart at its seams, allowing the Atlantic to flow into the ship's hull. The ship sank at 2.18 a.m. on April 15th, carrying more than 1,500 people to their graves below the Atlantic. Words don't do it justice. The scene at the dock in New York was amazing. Dead silence as we made our way to the mooring, then pandemonium. I saw Vincent Astor the Younger. Somehow he'd made his way on board. He found Mrs. Astor. Mr. Astor went down with the ship. They say the White Star office was mobbed with relatives. So many of them were disappointed. Major Butt died. So did Mr. Guggenheim and young Mr. Andrews. Both of the Strausses went down. Mrs. Strauss refused to leave her husband. Perhaps she was wise. Ismay made it onto a lifeboat and now everyone's calling him a coward. I'll never forget it. 
It looked as if a huge skyscraper was being sucked into the sea. The Titanic is unsinkable. Only God could sink this ship. We won't sink. This is the 20th century. I was lucky to get off alive. 